do an overview of my estimated cost worksheet, which as you can see starts out with a notice that the terms can change at any time. Interest rate markets are very dynamic, just like the stock markets, and change constantly. So realize when you get a rate quote that may be old as of that afternoon or certainly the next day. This particular example will be for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage on a $500,000 purchase price home with a 90% loan or a 10% down payment. I'm going to use an arbitrary interest rate estimate of 4.25%. That is simply illustrative. Then it shows you the APR, the annual percentage rate. This is not the rate that you will pay. You would pay, in this illustration, 4.25%. APR is supposed to be a shortcut measure to show you what the lender's terms are reflective of their closing cost. If you see a high APR, then the closing cost may be high. I don't like to use APR. I think it's an inaccurate measure. What you should do is simply look at the lender cost, which on my worksheet are highlighted in blue, and simply measure the interest rate that you're being quoted, all of the lender cost, and compare that to other interest rate and lender costs you might be checking, and that's it. That's how to measure a deal lender to lender to lender. The APR, I think, is an antiquated measure of a lender's fees. Getting into the lender fees, points are paid if you are going to buy down your interest rate by paying discount points. This is where you'd see them. In this illustration, we're doing a zero-point loan. You may be able to get an interest rate lower than 4.25% if you paid discount points. Every one discount point is 1% of the loan amount, so that gets expensive. Then you'll see the appraisal fee, which is just an estimate. Appraisal fees can be lower, they can be much higher. If you buy a multifamily property, if you buy a very expensive property, the appraisal fee could be higher. Then we have the credit report fee, we have the origination fee, which are basically fees for document preparation and underwriting. Then we have a flood certificate fee to check and see if the property is in a flood zone. Then we have all of the title fees, which are shown in green. Obviously, these are charged by a title company, a third-party title company. We will do our best to estimate them, but these are only an estimate. Don't measure a lender by all the third-party fees. Some lenders may lowball their estimate of the title fees or property tax escrows in an, in an effort to make their total financing package look lower, but their interest rate and fees may actually be higher. So when you're looking at title company fees, obviously look at all of them, but I think the most important ones are the lender's coverage title insurance, which is mandatory, and then the owner's coverage title insurance, which is optional. I would talk to a title company, any real estate attorney, maybe you have a family friend that's an attorney, Google the topic, and do some homework on your own and decide if you think you need to pay the optional owner's coverage title insurance in addition to the mandatory lender's coverage title insurance. The title insurance in general, certainly the owner's coverage title insurance, would cover you if after you buy the home there's a title defect, a lien on the property, a collection, something that impacts you that you were unaware of that wasn't found in the title search when you bought the property, you'd be covered with the owner's coverage title insurance. There may be a survey recertification. Then in red, you've got the recordation and transfer taxes, which vary quite a bit depending on the jurisdiction, state, and city that you buy in. What I'm illustrating here is uh, Washington, D.C., which happens to be quite expensive, which is 1.45% of the purchase price. Then we have some other fees. A home inspection fee, those vary. Condo questionnaire, if you're buying a condominium, I've seen them be anywhere from $100 to as much as $300. Then you've got the 
realtor administrative fee, you're going to want to ask your realtor if they charge any sort of admin fee. A lot of the larger realtor firms charge that. Scrolling down, we've got the prepaids and escrows. Those are amounts you're going to pay into an escrow account for homeowners insurance, property taxes, and then per diem interest, which is going to change depending on the time of month that you settle. If you settle on the 31st of the month, you might only have one day of per, per diem interest. If you settle on the 10th of the month, you may have 20 or 21 days. So then you've got your total closing cost plus prepaids. So this is the total amount of monies that you'll pay that include all of the closing costs to third parties, the prepaids, which really aren't closing costs. Those are monies that you would pay even if you paid cash for the property. These are monies that go into escrow for the homeowners insurance and property taxes. And then you've got the, in this case, the 10% down, which is $50,000 on a $500,000 purchase price. And then you've got total cash needed at closing, the down payment, plus all of the closing costs and all of the prepaids. Last, you would have a breakdown on the monthly payment. You'd have the mortgage payment, the principal and interest payment. You'd have property taxes, homeowner's insurance, mortgage insurance if you have less than 20% down. If there's any HOA fee for a townhouse or a condo, it would go here. And then you've got your total payment. And that is a summary and a quick overview of my estimated cost worksheet. Thank you.